and hello everyone welcome back to another Lua tutorial so in the previous tutorial we talked about strings in this tutorial we'll be talking about math and using the math library but take note you don't need to know a lot of math to follow along with this course we're just going to cover the basics that basically everyone will be able to understand so let's start with mathematical operators there's a lot of them for example 5 plus 5 we all know what this does this will add two numbers together I'm going to add a few here because we have quite a lot we then have minus which will of course subtract and this could go into the negative values you're not limited to just positive numbers we have times which is represented by an asterisk and not an actual X so an asterisk we have divide which is a forward slash not a backward slash but a forward slash and let's say we give 19 divided by 5 you have to the power of so this would be 5 to the power of 2 and then we have modulo and I'll explain this one after I've explained the rest so let's go 17 All right if we run this here we go so we start with 10 because 5 plus 5 it's 10 5 minus 15 will give you negative 10 5 times 5 is 25 19 divided by 5 that will give you 3.8 then 5 to the power of 2 will give you 25 and then 17 modulo 5 will give you 2. Now, all of them are pretty simple to understand. We have all learned these in school, except for modulo. You did learn this in school, just not quite the same. In a very basic sense, modulo is what is left over. Not literally, but it is what is left over. For example, if I say 17 divided by 5, well, that will be 5, then 10, then 15, right? So, if we were to say 17 minus 15, we'll get 2. Because 2 is what's left over if you were to divide these two. To give an example, let's just go here and say 17 divided by 5. One gives us 3.4 and the other gives us 2. Because 17 divided by 5 will give us how many times 17 can be divided by 5. 17 modulo 5 does the opposite. It gives us how much is left over once the 2 has been divided. So not this 0.4 here. But the actual value. Because if 5, 10, 15 and then 20. 20 cannot go into 17, so we'll have to stick with 15 because that's the lowest value we can get if we were to do this. And of course, 15 minus 17, or actually other way around, of course, 17 minus 15 will give us 2. And this is the remainder, that's what's left over. So it's almost the opposite of division. You don't have to worry too much about it. We will be using this a little bit more in the future. But you can get more used to it as time goes on. One thing I remember that people in my class always have trouble with was the order of ex execution in math. And order of ex execution can be a difficult topic because you might not remember what order what should be executed in. For example, 5 plus 2 times 10. Now I'm relatively okay with math so I would immediately notice that this 2 times 10 that should be done first and then after this has been done we'll get this 5 plus 2 but not everyone will notice this immediately because that is just normal not everyone is made the same so some may see this and think oh it's 5 plus 2 that's 7 7 times 10 that will give you 70 but in actuality it will give you 25 because 2 times 10 that's 20 and in 20 plus 5 is 25 now, if you're one of those that can't always remember in which order this happens, or if you just want to change the order in which this happens, then I have a solution for you. Brackets. Brackets 
is what we can use to specify when what should be executed. So here we could say it's first five plus two, then we times it by 10 because brackets will take priority over everything else and it will be done first. Now we will get 70 because now it's first doing this, then it will add this. And it's perfectly fine to do it over something that is going to do first. I sometimes do this as well to make myself remember this is what will happen first. As you can see, now we'll get 25. And you can, of course, add more things. So now if we go times 7, then we'll first execute this. Then it will execute this. And then it will execute this. But if you want to change that, you could do this. Now it will first do this right here. Then it will do this right here. And then it will do this. So the order of execution is up to you. You can change it depending on what you want. And now I can look at a few things inside of the math library. Print math.py. This will print out the value of pi. Very useful in some cases of 3.14159265 and so on. We have math.min, which will give you the minimum value of something. So let's say 10, 5, 189. The minimum value here would be 5. That's the lowest value of all of the values passed in. If we run that, we'll get 5. If we change this to negative 10, for example, then now we'll get negative 10 because that's the lowest value. You can also do max. Max will do the opposite and return the largest value. So now we'll get 100. Then you have rounding, which can be very useful. So you have math.seal, and this will round up. So 20.9, and we actually give a few here, 20.1. So these two both will go up, they will round upwards. We run this, we'll get 21. They will not round down. Seal is, in a sense, the ceiling. The ceiling is always above you. So if you look up, then that's where we'll round. It will round towards the ceiling, upwards. Then you have the floor. The floor will do the opposite because the floor is below you. It's down, so it will round down. That will give us 20. So this is a way to force rounding to a specific point where it's either down or up. And last but not least, let's talk about random numbers. Print math.random. Simple as that, you'll get a random number. Run it, run it, run it. That's cool. You can do multiple. So that's pretty neat. But sometimes you want your randomness to be more random. To do that, you can pass in a seed. So math dot, oh, math dot random seed. And we can pass in OS dot time. And this will ensure that our random values we get here is always random. They will never be repeated continuously. So now if we run this, we'll get more random values. We did get a few that repeat here, but that's just sometimes if you roll to roll random, you'll get the same thing. And it only updates once every second. You can specify up until where it should go. So if we say 10 here, then it will random to 10. So 2, 10, 4, 2, 7, 7, a few 7s there. So it will continuously round random towards 1 and 10. So between those two. You can specify another value here, for example, 50. Now it will be between 10 and 50. So it will not go underneath 10, and it will not go higher than 50. And yeah, that's the basics of math in Lua. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all again in the next video.